Hi, welcome to part 10 where I'm making a protogen head. I'm recording this intro as, after I just finished the work. This is going to kind of spoil what we're going to go over in this seg segment. But by the end of this part, we will have a fully working custom PCB with all the components on it and having the LED panels working, having the OLED display on the inside working, having the buttons working, obviously having the microphone working. Uh, everything is working. And now I'm going to show you how I got to this point. Unexpectedly, according to the tracking, the new PCBs have arrived. So I'm going to populate one to test that it works. And I am fairly certain that these will not physically fit inside the head with me wearing it. However, a quick glance at it does seem to indicate that this is, for the most part, sized correctly. Like it, it, it rests over where it needs to. The supports are, one of these supports at the end is slightly out of place. The power connector may also be slightly out of place, but in general, the physical dimensions are close. We'll see if I need to make any adjustments to them when I get the next revision or if it will just be the 3D printed parts that need adjusted. Other than that, it's time to get started on that. And for comparison, this is what the uh, prototype version of the board looked like. It is definitely a lot smaller and had issues and was just, am I doing KiCad correctly? But this version is very close to final. I was hoping it could be final, but let's turn this into something similar to this. Although it's still going to be looking completely different than that. So in order to do that, I need my components boxes. And then in this one, I have all the capacitors that I need. I have 10 microfarad, 0.1 microfarad. I have a bunch of 10K resistors. And then these are the IPO extent, the GPIO expander chips. So I will be needing stuff out of this. And then I will be needing a bunch of stuff out of here where I have all of my buttons and all of my pin headers and uh, sockets. Uh, the majority of things on this board are going to need uh, single row sockets for all these breakouts. I'm also gonna need single row headers for uh, some of these. And I have specific, uh, I need to actually get them out, uh, sockets and headers for the uh, Hub 75 connectors. So typically when you build stuff up, you want to go from the smallest components to the largest components. So that to me means I should start with the capacitors and resistors over here because those are nice and short against the board. Then I probably should do the, the IC, then the buttons, and then the pin headers and sockets. First sort of business, I guess, is get the resistors out. All of the resistors on here, there's three of them right here, are the same value, 10K ohm. So I don't have to worry about making sure I have the correct ones. And the only resistors I have are 10K ohm. And these are for the pull-ups for the interrupt and I squared C pins on the GPIO expander. And I need to turn my soldering iron on and adjust the temperature to approximately 300 C. I had it set to approximately 200 C for putting threaded inserts into PLA. And then to the side to hold them in place, I might as well feed all three of the resistors through first. So now I should be able to solder these in place. Okay, and let's validate that these are working by setting the multimeter to 20k ohm. There we go, 9.8, 9.78, 9.79. Perfect, all three resistors functioning as expected in the correct value. So now I can trim the excess off of the legs. And just put those to the side for now. I may put them somewhere to save them, to use as jumpers if ever needed, or what have you. But there we go. Resistors are in place. The shorter legs are 104. So 106 is 10 microfarads, so it goes in the top and the C1 position. And the 
other one goes in CP2 position. These do connect to the ground plane, so hopefully this won't be too much of a problem. I extended the offset from the ground plane for the pins from the last one, because the last one, the ground connections took a lot of heat. So hopefully this will help reduce the amount. And I don't have a capacitor checker, so I can't really validate that these are working, but it should be okay as long as they don't dead short. Because these are just for power conditioning. So let's check for a dead short between three volts and ground. Because that's really the only thing I can do. No short. Capacitors and resistors soldered in. Let's grab one of the chips. So this is a PCF8574. This is a TI part. And I 3D printed a little leg bender doodad to try to align the legs. So let's give it a squeeze. Hopefully it slides right in. So pin one is on this side because that's where the notch is. Pin one is here with the notch. And yeah, it just slides right on in. Nice. I'm gonna hit it with a couple of pins. I may have to increase the ground plane back off even more. I want to check the ground pins real quick. Okay. The grounds are all working. Resistors, capacitors, and IC. Yeah, next should be the buttons. There are spots for six buttons on here, but I'm only going to solder in the four that are required. I like how they snap on there and hold themselves quite nicely in place to make soldering that much nicer. Is it back menu up down? Back menu up down. Back menu up down. Nice. Buttons in place. Okay, so if I break this at three and six. need three here, or sorry, six there, and three here, and that just means I need something for it to rest on over here, like that. There we go. Okay. Nice. Uh, and then I also need headers here, here, and here, but I'm not going to populate the open MV. I guess I didn't need to populate this one yet either, because this is only for extra stuff. But I did need the gain. I don't actually need the external buttons yet, now that I think about it, but and I do need the capacitive touch. So I'm not going to populate those two, but I do need to populate this one, and I believe it takes 13. Uh, no, it only takes 12. It does not have a ground available. So 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve, twelve. Uh, it's gonna need to go at the end here as well. And then like so. Get the solder out of the way. Oh. There we go. That ah, came off. Like that. And then put that there to support that. And put this here to support that. That is the correct location. pins is pushed through a little bit. I don't know what I was expecting there. There we go. Cool. Next, I think I will do the pin sockets for the Hub 75 and to revalidate that that is the correct orientation. Pin one is on the left, on my left, because it's marked. Pin one is the red stripe. So it goes that way, and the keying is on that side. And this connector is rotated so that pin one is up here, so that should be rotated like so. So now, be able to boom, boom, boom all these on, and thankfully, I only actually need six connectors on this one, and these are not connected to ground. Only one of them is connected to ground, the one is actually ground. And likewise over here, only one is actually ground over there. So these should be fairly straightforward to solder. I am still gonna hit everything, even the, uh, the ones that don't matter because they will provide structural support. Okie dokie. Uh, next, I need single row pin sockets. With normal length legs. Because I need those here, 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 and here. So, how long is this? Is this? Oh, this one's actually long enough, the perfect length for here. So I'm going to put it here. Now these are going to be somewhat tricky to put in. I almost need to put pin headers in the other side and then put those into a breadboard to use to hold this in place so it doesn't. Uh, eyeball that to see, make sure it looks fairly perpendicular and then tack the ends in place. 
several of these pins are also not connected, I believe. Like this one is the reset pin, I think. This one's either reset or it's for the uh, arm debugging. I believe all three of these in the end. Two of them are arm debugging, one of them is reset. And they are not connected to anywhere. I debated adding a reset button, but I couldn't find a good place to put it on the board. Maybe when I uh, make the next revision of the board, I will make a better attempt at finding a place to put a reset button. But there's just not that much room on the board. And the matrix portal has a reset button on it anyway. So I could always just use that. But the rest of these lines are either used for something uh, all but one of them are actively used for something right now. Uh, oh yeah, I need to make bodge wires for the microphone. I'll do that when I'm done with everything else. That requires checking my circuit diagram to... Uh, well, actually, no I don't, because I will just put the the microphone in place and see which pins are which. Because as I mentioned in a previous video, I thought that it had a connector on it that went straight to the matrix portal. But it does not. That connector is only on the matrix portal. Uh, that looks like it's not quite perpendicular. Shoot. I probably should have checked that before I put everything in there. I may have to try to bend this a bit to get the matrix portal fit. I bring the matrix portal over. These need to go in here, and then this this goes like that, and that goes. Oh yeah, that is not. I should have not soldered all the pins before I checked this, because that needs to go like that, and then like this. There we go. But there we go. We got it. Hooray! So the matrix portal fits on this one, unlike the last one, because the last one I had stuff off position. So, hooray! And it clears everything else as intended. Awesome. Well, I need to take this back off because I need to finish putting the rest of the components on here. Jeez, it does not want to let go now that it is in here. It's the, there we go, the Hub 75, and, and I bent some of the pins when I took it off, but that's fine. I can bend those back. So what is left? I need to do one, two, three, four more sets of pin headers. Lovely. This one's going to be a little bit annoying. It needs, what, one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. So pull out the sixth one. My side snips, and then here, and okay, it just yeeted itself across the room. So this needs to go in here. Come on, there we go. Go ahead and get this soldered on. The only thing this connects to are the headers for the gain adjustment, and I'm going to need to put bodge wires to three of the pins to connect three volts ground and the last remaining pin on the matrix portal side connector here because I oopsied and forgot that I needed to provide those connections for this I think originally, or ideally, the plan would have been to have a receptacle for the cable from the side of the matrix portal, but I'm not going to bother with that right now because I don't need this extra pin on the matrix portal for anything else at the moment. So it's just easier to, uh, to use that. All right, next is the clock, which needs five as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there we go. Hold on to it so it doesn't yeet itself all over the place this time. Perfectly perpendicular. Yeah. 
it'd be nice so I can actually use the hard mounts that I have on them. Why is that not taken? That's not ground. This one only has the I squared C leads coming off because it gets connected over the flying cable to the matrix portal. There we go. So three of these pins are just for uh, structural support, basically. Two have data. display needs three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. that needs seven pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Yes. I'm counting one more because I need to have seven pins, which means I need to pull the eighth pin out. Oh wait, no, this one needs connectors on two sides. So I still need one more after this. I forgot about that. Which I think might also mean that I need to solder up another board. I believe really the only one of those that I have soldered up has the pins going in opposite directions and I need them in the same direction on this board. Yeah, so I need another row in here which has 13 on it, which means I need to get another strip of socket out. I don't have 13 left on that. So this adapter, or this breakout board is what needs to go in there, and as you can see, this one, I have the other pin headers going off the top, not the bottom. Okay, here is this other board that I must solder up. Okay, three need to come off that end. Uh, and this needs what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that three seven? Oops, not these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chip in through hole version to get to be able to use directly. And I did not want to do any sort of surface mount soldering. So I decided that I would just get an additional breakout and use the breakout. So that's the same kind of thing with the rest of the chips. It's like there was no e way to easily obtain the, just the chip that I would need uh, and not have to jump through a lot of hoops. Like I might have been able to get the clock chip but then I would have needed a crystal oscillator and a bunch of other support electronics at that point. It was almost as much as just dedicating one of the breakouts to it. Plus then the chance of screwing up the circuit and it just was not worth the effort. The GPIO expander was very straightforward. I mean, you saw how I hooked that up. It was a single nice through hole chip and five passives three of which might not even be required. Actually, all of which probably aren't required, but best practice might as well do it. And 
this guy goes in here, and we'll need to hold another one down there, and that is the correct orientation. Cool, so I need to get 13, I believe, and 12 data pins and a ground. I'm not gonna use the ground, but it's there, so, yeah. This is what it should have done for the matrix portal. There we go. It doesn't really want to... I think these are kind of... There we go. I needed to bend the socket that was already on there a bit more. And it still doesn't want to stay. to have some sort of software control to enable the capacitive touch which then means I need at least one more button and it needs to be accessible outside so I probably will need to hook up this button header so I can use one of them also I think that's it I think that is oh wait no it's not that's it for this side the only things not populated on this side are the external button headers, the two extra buttons, and the OpenMV header. And I do not have anywhere near the software support ready for that, so I'm not going to bother with it. But everything else on this side is done. That means the only thing to do is on this side, put this connector on, and I need to validate exactly which direction that needs to be. For the keying just to make sure i don't get it wrong and this is the correct direction for the keying the key is up here because the notch is up here this is the input because there's the plus on this and obviously this board goes in this orientation on here so that is the correct orientation for that and then when i'm done with this i do still need to bodge wire the microphone Okay, and then lodge wire, the microphone goes on here. So the pin down board, it, the furthest pin down board is ground. The next pin up is power in. Then it's gain, which I don't connect to, and then it's out. All right, so to do this, I'm going to use the pins here, the extra pins. Uh, the, these are the pins that are not used for anything, but I have power, ground, and the last I.O. pin available here. When I rework the board, I'm probably going to make a selection between this pin and a pin header and just provide a pin header to be able to use the connector on the side of the matrix portal. But for now, I am just going to... Um, bodge wire to this input pin because this is an analog capable pin and to this ground and to this power just to make the bodge wire shorter but to enable this power pin I have to put a solder jumper up here where it says extra power enable and I did that because I didn't want these pins that are just here to be live but I'd rather do that than snake a uh, a bodge wire to somewhere else that has power because I don't remember where that is off the top of my head. But that is I have to bridge this solder jumper. Oh, there we go. That looks bridged. So now if I go from 3V on this chip to 3V on this header, cool. Solder jumper worked. 
So that means I can go from the 3V here to the pin over there. These bodge wires are terrible. They don't have to be pretty, they just have to work. I don't think I need the actual thing in there to have a thing to... BDD. Okay. And then the one on the end there, here, is ground. And then it's the middle pin of the two that are left. I don't know what color is audio, orange? Sure. And then it has to go to PA07 because that is the input pin. And it can be used as an analog input. Those don't grant, those don't short, those don't short, these don't short. 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 Ground goes to ground. Ground VDD goes to VDD. Out goes to this, or actually, is it this? So this, that one. And is it that one? It is supposed to be that one. Okay, there. Bodge wires are complete. And one last check between three volts and ground. And ground and ground. Okay, three volts and ground. Nothing. Okay. I think it's time to. Put everything on here and see what happens. Hopefully I don't let the magic smoke out. So what I need now, uh, this camera angle to go away because A, it's almost out of storage, I'm sure, and B, I need its USB cable. Be able to reprogram the matrix portal and also power the matrix portal. Oops, like that. Okay, so the clock goes here like so the OLED goes here like so on the capacitive touch wherever that went goes there uh, I need to get the matrix portal on here, including fixing its bent pins from the last time I took it off. And putting it in here, like that. And this needs to get plugged in. Like so.
So basically all I have to do at this point is plug in the output from the second uh, LED panel like that and like that. So this needs to go like that. So this goes here. Okay, good. The hole that I made for the power works. I wish my main camera would make a noise when it stops a recording, but it doesn't. You have to just look at it to know that it has stopped recording. Almost done. I just want to see if this lets the magic smoke out. I sincerely hope that it does not, but we will find out. And I have this nice little magnetic adapter for the USB-C, so I can just pop it on here. And I do need to program it. That doesn't look good, but that might be because it's not getting power. The, the, that's also scrambled. Now let's just go ahead and turn the 5 volts, 1.5 amps on. Okay, so that looks better now that it's getting proper power. Let's flash the updated pin assignment to the processor, and hopefully that will fix the scrambled screen here. Uh, no, I still have a scramble. Oh, GPIO expander is also not working. Okay, I have problems, clearly, unfortunately. Oh, that, that was something else. Oh, status. Is, okay, that was an expected message. Okay, um, clearly it's not quite working right, unfortunately. The microphone is working, and this display is working. And I would assume that the one on the other side here is working as well. Yes, it is. So, this stuff is working, but the OLED is just static and it's getting errors reading from the IO expander. So I'm not going to debug this on camera. It's an amount of progress. It is not the amount of progress I would have liked. But with the I2C not working, the buttons aren't gonna do anything. Um, not that you can see anything because the OLED isn't working, but there is clearly some sort of a problem here, which is unfortunate. Okay, quick follow up. I said I was going to charge the mics and do come back and do a follow-up later and not do the debugging now, but I did the debugging now. It's only been about 15-20 minutes since I stopped recording the previous parts, but I got it all working. It was all software stuff. Uh, I forgot that I had moved some pins around from the uh, prototype board to make it easier. I had swapped the data command and the chip select pins on the um, OLED and I forgot that I had to change the I2C address for the GPIO expander because it's different on newer chips than it is on older chips. So I just had to change those. The buttons were also in a different order than I had them previously so I had to renumber which the what the buttons are. But everything is working. I know you probably can't really see too well on the camera. Let me zoom in. That's as good as I can make it. That's good enough. You can see that the OLED is functional and the RGB is working here as well. I can reach in here and hit the buttons and the, bu the menu loads. And I need to actually set the clock because 
Uh, it's been a few weeks and it's off. It's like eight minutes fast. So we're just going to have it reset the clock from Wi-Fi and validate that that's all working. Setting the RTC. Should be done by now. There, there we go. The clock is now correct. And yeah, it's all working. I am very excited. That means um, I can modify this board as needed to align with the supports because it's a little bit off. And then I can I can do a, a test fit so I know how much how badly this board is going to collide with my face when I put it on. So I know how much I need to slide it down this way. There is unfortunately not much room before I get to the ribbon cable that goes to the next display, but I can make this board taller so I can spread stuff out since I don't have to worry about fitting inside the original frame of the LED panels. So I can go up and down with relative impunity. Uh, I just have to make sure that I leave space back there and down here for the bracket to hold it in place. But otherwise, I think this is doing really well. Uh, the capacitive touch stuff works. It's just very difficult to do from here. There we go. Yeah, I got into the menu by using the capacitive touch. So that all works. Uh, can I get back out? Yes, I can. There we go. <laughs> I am so happy that this stuff basically worked right the first time. There was just minor software issues that I forgot I had to take care of before it would work. That means that I can't go back to my old test harness, but I don't need to now. It freaking works. I love it. I guess I also need to put this LED panel on this mounting frame because I believe this is the final mounting frame that I'm going to use on this side of the head. I know this video has probably gotten super long. If you've enjoyed this series, uh, please subscribe, let me know, leave a comment, hit the like button, whatever. Uh, follow me on Mastodon, whatever. Just uh, stick around. Finishing up the physical part of the head is going to happen next. I need to figure out what the hell I'm doing with this, and that might take me more than a week, but I might try to make some content out of that. Anyway, thanks for watching.